uh, asking some question through whatsapps uh, i hope uh, more and more of you will uh, ask uh, some questions and some doubts or some query if it is there so please try to utilize uh, the process uh, how we are interacting so this whole things is only to help you so <clears throat> Uh, do you have any any things to be asked uh, uh, in regards to the previous classes? So in our last uh, interactions, uh, we 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 discuss about the artery variety family, uh, uh, which include this uh, equine viral arteritis and pars infection, uh, and reproductive and respiratory syndrome virus infection. We discuss it. Mm, so uh, the members and the Disney do viral is uh, and beforehand uh, we talk about this uh, corona variety family so this uh, and this this type of interaction and classes uh, i guess uh, will give you an baseline and uh, will help you in understanding the, uh, uh, the the subject particularly when you refer to any textbook or any any literature so you you will be encountering uh, some technical uh, parts about uh, the, the the organism about the disease and about the um, vaccines so at that point uh, we feel that you should not be in an uh, see that you don't understand uh, what uh, that matter material is speaking so uh, this will give you a basic uh, uh, understanding about this uh, uh, virus and the viral diseases uh, occurring. Of course, uh, this is uh, study the disease in uh, micro or pathology is not an, uh, in terms of a complete one because we are going to discuss again in the uh, medicine and the preventive uh, uh, measures, those things will be discussed further. So when you go on repeating the discussions, I feel your uh, informations and the knowledge will be uh, more clear. So uh, I am sharing uh, my screen as a uh, full screen mode. Uh, can anybody tell me could you see it very properly? Yes, sir. OK, fine. So today uh, uh, we plan to discuss about this Picona yes, virus. Yes, thank you. Uh, this uh, particular uh, uh, group of uh, viruses, uh, PICO RNA, PICO, PICO, you uh, understand, the nano, PICO, uh, MTO, these are the uh, measures, and PICO is uh, very small, uh, smaller than the nano. So, PICO RNA variety name has been given because of this very small size virus uh, uh, within this uh, group. And uh, they are having some common characteristics and uh, earlier times, people thought that these are the smallest uh, virus. That's why they have given the name as Pico RNA variety family. But later on, when the circo viruses were identified and uh, their size are uh, uh, even lesser than that of the Pico or uh, Picona variety, so now we recognize the circo are the uh, smallest vertebrate virus, um, whereas uh, the Picona variety, they are also the small viruses around say uh, 25 to 30 nanometer in diameter, the uh, size of the particle, extremely small particle. And they are, uh, they, they do not have envelope and microcycle symmetry. So include some uh, very important virus of human as well as uh, animal. In animal, uh, we are much interested to learn about the foot and mouth disease, uh, which is an, uh, um, uh, as earlier also we mentioned in uh, some other lectures, particularly in the brucellosis, Gulf of India is spending a huge amount of money for eradication of food and mouth disease from our country. And this is, uh, our country is highly endemic for food and mouth disease and is a common uh, uh, causes of economic losses, particularly in the dairy farm. Um, so we'll learn about the uh, food and mouth disease virus. Uh, we'll share some information. So gradually, when you read the more literature, you will be acquiring more and more information about the uh, 
virus as well as the disease. So the Picona viridae uh, family uh, just crop it from ICTV, having uh, so many uh, different uh, families, related family in the order Picona virales. Recently, they have up upgraded this into a Picona virales order. Uh, but uh, we'll be restricting to the Picona viruses. Uh, this also include the um, uh, that um, human uh, polio virus, enterovirus uh, infections in human, those are uh, uh, yeah, uh, um, the, the different 40 different families are there, but uh, uh, some of it which are uh, related to the animal diseases, I'm just focusing it here. And out of all these diseases, we are going to discuss about this foot and mouth disease and dark hepatitis virus. So this uh, foot and mouth disease is under the genus Aptovirus uh, and the dark hepatitis is under AV hepatovirus. Uh, this uh, two disease we are going to discuss. Besides the other uh, infections like swine vascular disease and bovine rhinovirus, avian encephalomyelitis, these things are there. Uh, when you get scope and time, you can read up other pieces also. So I'll just escape this phylogenetic tree. Uh, let us go to the general characteristics of this uh, family, Picona viridae, Pico RNA viruses. So they are non-enveloped icosahedral symmetry, almost 20 to 30 nanometers, their members within that range, very small um, um, uh, RNA virus. And uh, one of the very interesting features is that the RNA is infectious, similar to that of other positive strains RNA we discussed. Here also, uh, the RNA, if you can purify and uh, transfect inside a cell, the new virus particle will produce. So we say that this copy uh, the property is the RNA is infectious. So having a, a very small genome size, which is uh, almost 8,000 to 8,500 uh, uh, kilobases. It's almost uh, um, like um, 8,000 nucleotide. Eight, 8 to 8.5 kilobases is the size, genome size of this group of viruses. Extremely small genome. With that, they are happy and they are producing a lot many proteins and are producing severe kind of disease in uh, animals and humans. So four important polypeptide uh, that form the capsid layer, they are termed as VP1, 2, 3, and 4, uh, which form this uh, capsid layer of the coronaviruses. Uh, out of that, the VP1 is the most immunogenic protein, and the neutralizing antibodies are produced against this uh, VP1 protein. Okay, this is a small lycosahedral like symmetry virus. So uh, among these different members, some members are showing some stability to pH and uh, heat. Um, but uh, the virus of our importance is uh, Picona viruses, the foot and mouth disease virus under the genus Aptovirus. Uh, they are uh, um, uh, stable and uh, they are unstable below pH uh, 7. However, they are uh, resistance to heat and can survive for longer period. And, uh, since they are non-enveloped virus, the highlighted line, please uh, uh, notice it. Since they are non-enveloped viruses, they are resistant to lipid solvent and bile salts, okay? So even the lipid solvent, if you expose the virus, the virus will not lose its infectivity. So uh, they can survive it and uh, the virus, uh, they purely replicate in the nucleus. Let us see this, uh, the replication process of the Picona virus. So very straightforward among the RNA viruses, since it is an uh, positive sense RNA virus, so uh, transcription doesn't occur. This virus, when they bind with this uh, surface uh, through specific uh, uh, silic acid receptors, and then they, they, they endocytos and within the endosomes, the encapsidation takes place and the nucleic acid get released. And once the nucleic acid will get released, since they are the positive sense RNA virus. So on the surface of the ribosomes, they will cause uh, the protein synthesis. And this uh, initial proteins, as you know about this, uh, uh, they are the enzymes and utilizing that enzyme, the RNA dependent RNA polymerase are produced inside the cells. And 
taking the uh, original uh, genome as a template, they will produce the negative sense and again they will convert to the positive sense. These are the genomic replication. And side by the structural proteins will form. So uh, at the end, the virus will get assembled in the cytoplasm of the host cells and they release it by lysis of the cells. So this is a property. Uh, the virus they accumulates uh, more in numbers inside the cytosols and finally they will cause disruption of the cytoplasm membrane the cell lysis takes place. So as a result, when you grow this virus in the um, cell culture, different uh, types of cells are available out of which the baby hamster kidney 21, BHK21 is the most preferred cells for growing the foot and mouth disease virus. So uh, they cause us within 48 to 72 hours, the rounding of cells and the granularity will increase and then complete destructions of the cells will take place and every cells will float uh, in the supernatant. So that's uh, the typical therapeutic effect they produce uh, in the cell culture in the laboratory. However, the same type of changes also occur in the animal body, more particularly in the mucosal epithelium, they cause the blister formation, the hydropic degenerations. We'll come to that point again. So uh, another very important aspect of the virus, why we are, uh, it is taking a lot of time to get rid of this infection from our population is that this is an highly mutating virus and mainly the intramolecular recombination is very common. Means within this uh, genome, the uh, suffering uh, takes place and uh, new mutant strains are produced. So the individual mutants are not, uh, they, they are antigenically dissimilar and cannot cross protect each other. This is one of the major reasons why it is difficult to control the infections with single vaccination. So, that those are the general characteristics of this virus. Now, let us come to the disease, foot and mouth disease. You know, like this is the first uh, viral infection of animal known to the mankind. As, as you know, the Loeffler and the Frost, uh, they first time uh, studied this disease and the virus etiology was explored by them. And uh, it was uh, globally uh, prevalent in all countries earlier, but most of the developed country, they able to eradicate the disease from their country. So most of the European countries and uh, American countries, Australia, Japan, the disease is uh, not prevalent. They totally able to eradicate the disease. However, um, the other developing country, the disease is uh, rampant as the case in our country. So every year we record uh, um, the outbreak of the foot and mouth disease. Of course, out of the measures taken by the government for mass vaccinations and uh, restricted animal movement, uh, the, 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 the numbers of outbreaks has declined substantially. Even in India, there are certain areas where, uh, particularly in the uh, northern India, um, some of the state, they able to record zero outbreak in some year because of uh, the measures taken. However, uh, the disease is prevalent and in Northeast India, uh, the disease is highly prevalent and uh, we record uh, every year outbreaks and when the outbreak occurs, it's a large epidemic occur, large area, the animal, uh, uh, they suffer and produce the disease rapidly, it's spread among the populations and they start showing the signs and symptoms. So. Uh, this is one such disease because of which many of the country, although, you know, like our country is the largest producer of milk and we had the largest buffalo and the cattle population in the world. We had a lot of potential for exporting uh, milk, meat, but many countries, they do not accept this product as because the disease is prevalent in our country. That is why this present government is taking up a... Uh, um, uh, uh, um, and I should say it's a gigantic project of spending a huge amount of money uh, for a five years period to eradicate Brusilla and the foot and mouth disease from our country. And this uh, uh, is going on and uh, veterinarians in all states are actively participating in this uh, eradication process by massive vaccinations and reporting of the disease.
So earlier, the Office International Day Epigenetics, what we call as the World Organization of Animal Health, they categorized the diseases in the least A, least B, but nowadays, uh, this uh, least A, least B uh, nomenclature they have uh, uh, abandoned. Mm, they simply say that this is a uh, disease which is having severe economic impact on the countries. So that's uh, uh, the disease. Uh, Let's come to the qualitative organism. These things, please note it down very properly, and you must remember uh, seven different serotypes were identified globally. They are OASIA1, South African Territory 1, South African Territory 2, and 3. These are the seven different serotypes still now identified uh, among these uh, foot and mouth disease virus outbreaks globally. Right? The genus is Aptovirus. Please record it properly. Uh, the family Piconavididae. So, uh, these seven serotypes, out of the seven serotypes, the OAC SCL1 is uh, prevalent in Asian country, and uh, uh, SAP uh, three serotypes are uh, restricting to the um, African continent. So, out of this, again, the O is the most common serotype associated with the majority of the outbreak. and. Uh, there are some instances where this O strain has been seen as a pandemic uh, in uh, Asian countries. More than one country at a time, the animals were affected because of this uh, O serotype uh, infection. So sometimes also we call it a panacea strain O, so common in all countries. But beside A, C, and SEO1 were also detected. However, please note it down, in India, for quite a long period, the C types has not been seen in recent times, what we uh, say. Earlier, C was also prevalent in India, but uh, uh, for quite a long period, the C serotypes uh, could not be seen in India, and the most prevalent strain in India is the OASCR1. Please note it down, this is a frequently asked question. So as such, an earlier, whatever the vaccines were prepared, that include the OAC, SCA1 strain, but now they remove the C strain, and a trivalent vaccine, OA, SCA1, is uh, available at present in our uh, market for vaccination. So this is a very frequent asked question. Please note it down. Uh, no more C is recorded in India in recent time. So, uh, one of the uh, worried point is that this serotype, they do not cross protect each other. I mean, the vaccination with A cannot give protection against O and vice versa, it happened. As a result, the total approach of controlling the disease by vaccination is a multivalent vaccine approach. That's why the trivalent vaccines is practiced in our country, right? And the second important points from the general part, uh, what we learn is that they, they are um, highly mutating virus. So there is no scope to develop a live attenuated strain virus for uh, vaccination. So, so because of this constraint, uh, the, the, it is sometimes we feel difficult to control the disease by simple vaccination. Somebody is trying to join or yeah. My special request, please, please read it, read it thoroughly about this uh, uh, viral infection, the food and mouth disease virus. Um, if anybody asks you, like, the, tell me about the most important viral disease in India, in animal, then uh, first answer will be the food and mouth disease. Remember, this is an uh, uh, disease every year we record many outbreaks and causing severe economic losses. Now, if you try to understand about the host, who are affected? This is another point, why it is very difficult to uh, eradicate the disease from uh, um, locality. All cloven-footed animals are susceptible. All cloven-footed means animal with uh, cliff hoof. So pig, sheep, goat, all cloven footed, including the wild uh, animals uh, having the cloven footed. So cattle, buffalo, all the solid paid animals are not affected. Like equines are not susceptible to food and mouth disease. FMD never occur in 
horse species, equine species. They, 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 they did not uh, uh, provide the receptor to bind and uh, the transcription factor needed for the virus replication in their cells. So the disease never occur in the solid way. This is another frequently asked question. So beside this, all other cloven hoofed animal, even in elephant, the disease has been recorded. So the mostly uh, we see the outbreaks in uh, the cattle population, the dairy cattle, as well as um, the drought animals. So then how the disease spread? There is a long list and different mechanism, including the most uh, difficult part to control the infection is wind flow. It says that certain studies uh, totally confirm that in wind decision, the virus can flow in the winds in some small droplets or in some dust particle to a distance place. So the other measures definitely we can take it, but what to do with the wind flow if the virus they spread through the wind? It's extremely difficult to contain the disease in an area. So probably this is another reason why the disease is uh, prevailing even after vaccination carried out in many areas. So these are some of the issues rise with this disease. Now in contact is the most common way uh, the animals developing the disease in secreting the virus in their uh, uh, secretion and excretion. So through clothing, shoes, then inanimate object, form utensils, easily it can be uh, transmitted from one form to the other, milkers and so many other portals are there. Over and above, another worried point is that in this particular disease, there is no mortality occurring in the adult animal. There is some for fraud the disease for a period of a week or two. And after that, the animal recover. The adult animal, I'm talking about the adult animal. Uh, of course, in calf, the mortality is there. But in the adult animal, there is no mortality. However, 100% morbidity occurred. Total production loss takes place. So those recover, certain percentage of the recovered animal act as a carrier animal. This is another uh, point because of which it is difficult to control the uh, disease easily. So the carrier animals, they recover without any signs of symptoms. They will harbor the virus in their throat and time to time they may excrete the virus and those animals become a source of infection the next outbreak. So this is another mode of transmission. So and these are some of the issues because of which uh, the disease is difficult to control. Uh, however, it's not impossible. Many countries have souls that uh, they totally um, contain the disease and uh, eradicate the disease from their country. So another aspect in our country, what has been seen and depicted in the literature is that unrestricted animal movement so the animals uh, as a carrier status can disseminate the infection from to a distant place during transportation. So these are the different modes of spread recorded in uh, foot and mouth disease virus. Now, if you discuss about the pathogenesis, you'll find uh, mainly through the nasal and the oral mucosa, the virus will enter, even through the genital root, it may enter. Then this virus, they uh, will multiply in the epithelium, epithelial uh, tissues. And then the virus goes to the circulation and it produces a systemic infection, like, like the viremia occur. At the stage of viremia, the animal, they exhibit high rise of temperature. And then the typical lesions we could see in the mucous epithelium, particularly in the mouth and feet. That's why it's, it's called as the foot and mouth disease. So in the buccal cavity, in the tongue, in the gums, leaves, uh, there is formation of uh, vesicles. And this vesicle formation is because of the hydropic degeneration and necrosis of the infected cells in the epithelium. That leads to blister formations. And the blister subsequently, uh, they breaks and are uh, uh, ulcerated area we could see in the mouth and it's very painful for the animal and the animal unable to eat and drink till the lesions process in the mouth. So um, beside the mouth, the lesions also develop in between the um, cleft of the hoof. 
as a result, uh, the, the blister formations and lesions that produce in the foot unable to make the animal move and they frequently stamp their leg out of pain and rarely they move from the place. They used to remain stand in one place and they are unable to graze and eat that up and uh, uh, thereby the production loss takes place. However, the adult animal, what has been observed is that the animal, they never die out of this. If extreme starvation may occur, then it's a different issue. But uh, usually the animal, they do not die. They recover within two weeks of time. And uh, the clinical manifestation stay goes out. However, the animal never attain its original production level. So some of the sequelae, they remains in the animals. Uh, uh, like uh, loss of uh, mm, thermoregulatory center, some uh, changes that occur because of which the animal exhibit rapid respirations and uh, sometimes excessive hair growth takes place in the animal. These are some of the sequelae of uh, food and mouth disease infection. But the story is different in case of cough. The cough, basically, this virus, they uh, um, attack the uh, cardiac muscles. So this cardiac muscles, when get uh, affected, they become weakened. As a result, what happened? We see myocarditis conditions in cough. So either in the fetal stage or in the um, just a second. Yes, uh, uh, the, 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 the mortality we could see, high mortality in the cough because of myocarditis condition. Please note it down. This is another very frequent question. But in adult, the 100% is the morbidity, not mortality. Morbidity means production loss. The animal like the drought animal unable to walk and and do any of how many walk and uh, dairy animal there will be total production loss say one animal is giving 20 liters of milk daily once the fmd heals it will goes down to one or two liter and after recovery the animal never retains 20 liters so thereby it causes massive economic losses okay what we can do is that simply to prevent the entry of the virus and the disease outbreak by proper vaccination and other zoosanitary measures we'll be discussing in subsequent slides. So, some of the clinical symptoms that uh, already we discussed it, uh, when the uh, mouth lesions start developing, then we can see drooling of saliva. This can be seen from distance place and it is easy to get some idea about the disease in the population. So, drooling of saliva and the animal will so smacking sound, uh, and stamping leg, uh, lameness will develop. And uh, these are some of the uh, things, uh, the overgrowth and heat control is in the recovery stage, we can see. And in the cough, if you do the post-mortem, then you can find, uh, find some uh, dirt and light patches uh, of uh, hemorrhagic strips in the uh, cardiac muscles and sometimes it is described as a tiger heart condition. Of course, this is very uh, weak heart and it's not a very uh, bold heart, okay? So, uh, this lesion is not only restricting to the buccal epithelium, even it may go to the rumen pillars where inside the rumen also blister formation can take place and um, the, 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 the blister will rupture and uh, some uh, raw area, surface area will develop. So this is a typical symptoms of uh, foot and mouth disease where drooling of saliva will take place, smacking sound the animal will produce. If you closely observe and open up the mouth and you can see some sort of blisters are forming in the tongue and gradually this blister will rupture. This is one severe situation. In the tongue, the blister will ruptures and uh, this is an ulcerated area. This kind of uh, ulcerated area, we can see it. Uh, and this is the most painful conditions in the animal, unable to take anything at this stage. So similarly, these lesions also persist. These are some of the uh, pictures from pigs. And 
in the pig frequently what we see this whole uh, hoof sloughs off and the animal unable to even stand up uh, the coronary uh, band area inflammations and painful swelling that occur and these are some of the blisters forming and so these are some of the eroded tongue lesions in cattle and in the interdigital space this kind of uh, hoof ulcer takes place even that may extend to the teeth surface blister formation may take place so mostly in the epithelium we can see this kind of changes uh, blister formation in the snouts of pig however the number of outbreaks in pigs and uh, clinically uh, distinct uh, disease is less uh, recorded in our country so mostly we record the cattle infections which are uh, which can be visible very easily through this clinical manifestation however pig is also considered to be an important uh, animals harboring this virus and they also suffer from this, this infection this is a rumen pillar of the post mortem somebody has recorded where it has been seen the uh, formation of uh, uh, this uh, blister and rupture of blister takes place. Uh, this is another picture so showing some thyroid heart conditions, void and dark patches are seen. So that's about this uh, uh, symptoms and pathology of foot and mouth disease. Now coming to the diagnosis, of course, the clinical manifestation is so prominent in cattle. Rarely we need uh, much uh, approach for confirmatory diagnosis. However, there are some vesicular disease uh, in pigs and uh, cattle like vesicular exanthema or swine vesicular disease where the animals may show similar kind of symptoms and uh, for that definitely we have to go for a laboratory approach for identifying the or diagnosis of the disease. Uh, another important aspect is that uh, uh, we must record the serotypes, the specific serotypes associated with the outbreak. And uh, as you know, the, the, under the ICR system, there is an agency called as uh, PDFMD, Project Directorate of Foot and Mouth Disease. This agency is monitoring the outbreaks through the state veterinary department. Every state veterinary departments are having a laboratory for recording the foot and mouth disease outbreak and it should be the, the government is giving maximum emphasis that uh, proper recording of the disease outbreak should be there so as to um, adopt uh, measures to get rid of this infection from our country so laboratory diagnosis uh, uh, we need to collect some uh, clinical sample and mostly it is the ruptured epithelium from the tongue we can collect as such the blood because the virus is available in the blood also. So serum samples, we can collect it for uh, serological investigation. Then in a um, laboratory where the cell culture facility is there and more particularly the PDFMD, uh, they go for isolation of the virus in BHK21 cells and uh, the virus they produces typical cytopathic effect. And this is characterized by total disruption of the cell. This, here, this picture is the normal BHK cells. Uh, these are the fibroblastic cells and uh, cells after infection, after uh, say 72 hours of infection, these pictures will appear. So total disruption of cells takes place. So uh, um, that PDFMD, they, they developed a uh, uh, serotype specific ELISA test and these are available in all state veterinary uh, DIO laboratory in all state and uh, they go for the sandwich ELISA to find out the serotypes. So basically they investigate whether it is O, A, C, S, C, R, 1, these four serotypes and they is to screen it and finally it is recorded and every year the disease scenario is published for the people. Then they again come up with another type of ELISA called as NSP ELISA. This is to differentiate the uh, naturally infected and vaccinated animals. Uh, some other uh, classes will discuss it, the concept of DIVA. And so one NSP based ELISA test has been developed by uh, the same PDFMD. So uh, they again come up with a test of the VNT, virus neutralization test in the form of a test called as liquid phase blocking ELISA, uh, LPBE ELISA. 
So, since the disease is uh, very much prevalent in our country and uh, frequently we vaccinate the animal, so uh, it is a common approach to find out the neutralizing factor prevailing in the heart just to understand the heart immunity at, uh, at a point. So, this laboratory has also equipped with this kind of uh, techniques, liquid phase blocking ELISA tests, a simple ELISA to find out the neutralizing antibody. However, as you know, this neutralizing antibody can be detected by virus neutralization test only, and for that we need a sequencer laboratory. So that alternative has been developed and are used extensively in many countries. There are some animal models for diagnosis purpose where the facilities were not there. People earlier, they try to in inoculate and reproduce the disease in suckling mice and guinea pig. But uh, these days, this type of techniques are not practiced because we have the efficient method of uh, isolating the virus and molecular characterization of the virus by PCR. So uh, those techniques are nowadays not used. So the uh, serotype specific RT-PCR test has been developed and they can uh, be performed with an accuracy and very rapidly we can detect the uh, specific serotype of FMDB virus. So this is the uh, approach for diagnosis of foot and mouth disease and um, and uh, of course the differential diagnosis we need to discuss it as because uh, there are some other vascular disease where um, similar kind of lesions uh, we could see right so the, it is possible only by uh, your laboratory techniques now coming to the prevention and control so i have intentionally made this three um, uh, serotypes, uh, bold and bigger one. Please note it down. This is the most frequently asked question. So, for controlling the disease uh, at present, uh, uh, we are using uh, oil adjuvanted, inactivated cell culture propagated vaccines. And this is a uh, multivalent, and we call it a trivalent vaccine. Three strains are mixed it up with more concentration of O than A than SA1. So these viruses uh, are grown and then they are inactivated. They are killed. They are killed by uh, some uh, compound and uh, maybe there's uh, BEI, binary amine, or beta propiolactone. But uh, in the recent times, uh, we are uh, using uh, aziridine compound, aziridine compound for inactivation of this uh, virus. And after inactivation, since these are killed virus, so we have to add a suitable adjuvant, aluminum hydroxide is a saponin. Uh, but uh, as I said, that oil, uh, mineral oils are mostly used so as to increase the uh, immune stimulation for a prolonged period. So this is the way how we can uh, protect the animal by giving vaccination. But mind it, since these are inactivated or killed vaccines, so they cannot give protection for long period. Exactly the same scenario what is happening with Covaxin. Covaxin is a killed vaccine virus. So it cannot give protection for a long period. We have to go for repeated boostering. Only then we can maintain a sustainable uh, level of antibodies in the blood, okay? So, uh, since uh, we cannot have any live identity strain, if somebody asks you why it is so, the simple answer will be, this is a highly mutating virus. So, uh, live identity strain, we cannot prepare uh, to vaccinate this animal. If prepared also, it will automatically uh, convert it into virulent form when they come in contact with the wild counterpart. So this is the reasons why we depend on the killed vaccines. However, in uh, certain countries, they are uh, planning for uh, um, more uh, different uh, types of vaccines like virus-like particle as an adjuvant of vaccines for controlling the disease. And these are all under uh, laboratory uh, conditions only. No commercial vaccines are available. So it is only the inactivated vaccines uh, which is practiced globally. 
So in now country, this uh, OVAC, uh, this is the uh, vial which has been uh, recommended for uh, vaccination against the foot and mouth disease. This is a trivalent vaccine, tri means three. Three uh, and antigens are added. They are the O, A, S, A, 1. Earlier C was there, but uh, C has been uh, uh, withdrawn from the vaccines as because for quite a long period, there is no outbreak of C we could record in our country. But why it is necessary to uh, record the serotypes every outbreak? Because we know we had a long international boundary. Our neighboring countries are having the C type. So through transboundary transmissions may occur and the virus may get enter. So in that case, we have to change the vaccines uh, formula once again. So this is mainly targeted in cattle, buffalo, sheep, goat, and pigs. And uh, the, the schedule has been given as per the company recommendations. And if you go for uh, the company recommendation as such, then uh, we can protect the animal from uh, the face outbreak. Probably by this kind of extensive vaccination carried out in the state of Punjab and Haryana, they able to uh, record zero outbreak for uh, consecutive five to six years, and they are in the process of declaring that area as a free of uh, FMDV. However, when we considered uh, the whole country, the other parts, the diseases are prevalent. So it is possible that is the government is taking initiative to uh, control the disease and eradicate the disease. So some of the points always we must remember and is frequently asked and discussed point why and what are the constraints of controlling the foot and mouth disease first point large number of susceptible animal species all cloven footed animal including the wildlife they also harbor the virus so um, the, the the organisms will present in the surrounding so more number of virus serotypes so as such in india like these three serotypes are prevailing at present so they do not cross protect with each other. So that is another reason. Then antigenic drifting, you know, the intramolecular recombinations lead to drifting of uh, the antigenic structure. If it is so, then the, uh, uh, the, the vaccine virus may not be able to protect the uh, wild type virus totally. That persistent nature of the virus, once the outbreak occurs, uh, a percentage of uh, recovered animal, they harbor the virus and excrete and become a source of infections uh, near future. So this is another point so uh, difficult in controlling the FMD in our country. Unrestricted livestock movement. This is again and uh, things which uh, we can uh, act readily and can restrict the animal movement uh, from one place to the other. Mm, if the movement takes place with proper record, should be done with proper screening. Then the cost of vaccines, storage problems, and short duration of immunity. This lies with the vaccine strain. Of course, this uh, inactivated vaccines can be stored at four degree, four to eight degree centigrade. Uh, but uh, if that facility is also not there, then uh, this vaccine will be of no use. Then the cost. Many animals, uh, people do not bear the cost for vaccinations and short duration of immunity. We are always happy if we give a single shot and uh, remain uh, sitting with that, yes, I will not uh, acquire any infections. But it doesn't happen. The duration of immunity, if it is short, the repeated boosting, we have to take it. So please uh, record this uh, information and read any standard book. You will get all this information very nicely and try to update your knowledge uh, about this uh, FMD control and eradication in our country. Okay. Now, coming to the second infection, that hepatitis uh, uh, virus infection. So, this is uh, again, uh, uh, it, it, it is recorded in uh, many countries, initiated in USA. Uh, uh, and then uh, subsequently it is uh, disseminated in, in all duck uh, um, uh, rearing countries uh, and uh, uh, our country the disease has been recorded and it is one of the major cause of uh, mortality 
and basically it occur in ducklings ducklings um, and as the age increases the disease intensity reduces and in adult it cannot cause any damage however in duckling it can cause 95% mortality up to 95% mortality in duckling so this is an acute highly fatal contagious immediately it transmits in the population highly contagious uh, viral disease of duck so similarly in the herpes virus uh, we are going to discuss about the duck plague but this is different from the duck plague duck plague is duck uh, virus enteritis and this duck hepatitis uh, this is uh, uh, duck virus hepatitis is the infection so uh, the causative organism is a b hepato virus uh, <coughs> so uh, uh, the three distinct um, uh, serotypes uh, uh, has been seen type 1 2 and 3 and the causative organism av hepatovirus a okay so uh, this uh, type 1 is uh, associated with most of the infections and uh, the virus this is uh, very much resistant it says that the virus can withstand 50 degree for a few hours so it's a very very stable virus in the environment at 37 degree centigrade it can survive for um, two three days so um, the virus is very stable in that way and that is attributing to the transmissions and disease prevalence so the main host of the disease is the duckling uh, the first week of life uh, as i said as the age increases the disease severity decreases okay so uh, the infected birds they excrete the virus as well as the adult bird they may harbor it in their intestines and they become a source of infections and are sedetrophices and direct contact leads to the outbreak okay so once the virus they uh, infect the um, uh, ducklings the main uh, uh, symptoms that we could see in the liver so extensive hepatic necrosis occur and that attribute to sudden death even within eight hours of infections uh, they will record that the ducklings they die out of severe hepatic necrosis but uh, from the hepatic necrosis, the viruses also, they uh, infect the spleens and kidneys and kidney damage uh, could be observed as well as the mottling of the spleen. These are some of the observations and bile duct uh, hyperplasia, this and other uh, recorded things in the uh, duct hepatitis virus infection. So, um, if you observe the clinical signs and symptoms uh, of the disease, of course, this is confuses with the, the uh, duct plague infection. However, duct plague can occur in all age group, but this one basically in the ducklings we see. Um, but other symptoms are almost similar to that of the duct plague. So it's a highly contagious, rapidly it's spread. That is one nature of this uh, disease. So lethargy and ataxia. Ataxia means nervine incoordinations are shown by the uh, uh, ducklings and gradually they lose their balance and um, finally they uh, they will uh, fall on their sides and spasmodic kickings are uh, uh, observed and they uh, die and at the time of death you can see the total bending of the neck what is called as the opistotonous condition so these are some of the um, observation clinical observations of uh, dark uh, uh, virus hepatitis infection so this is the topic of those conditions and at the post-mortem what we can observe is that uh, um, pinpoint dichymotic hemorrhages in the liver and massive damage that occur in the liver the mottling of the spleens we can see this is the dichymotic hemorrhages that occur in the liver so extensive hepatic necrosis that occur and that leads to the death okay so in the diagnosis process uh, of course, the clinical manifestation gives us some uh, information about the disease, but uh, so immediately what we can do, we can prepare some smear from the dead bird, uh, liver impression smear, and go for the FAT test, and we can uh, specifically detect the uh, presence of the virus. So besides, so we can go for the isolations, uh, which can be done in the dark embryo liver, as well as the even the chicken 
uh, fibroblast also we can grow the virus, chicken embryo also we can propagate the virus. However, chickens are rarely affected uh, because of these infections, but in embryo the virus can be grown. And the typical uh, cytopathic effect is the total disruption of the cells, which is common in the picornavirus group. And the other test like artificial ELISA, VNT, we can perform it. And that's about the diagnosis of uh, duck uh, hepatitis infection. So definitely in the duck farm or duck rearing practice, we must include these vaccines to give protections against the uh, disease. So in the uh, in the preventive prevention of the disease, uh, the vaccination is again targeted mainly to the breeder flock. As because the disease hits the first week of uh, uh, the, the ducklings in one week of age. So active immunizations, uh, it takes some time, maybe 72 hours uh, um, times or 96 hour times is needed to develop some sort of immunity. So that is why the passive immunization is uh, more preferred to get rid of the infection. However, the attenuated strain vaccines are also recommended in the duckling for active immunization. So we're using this kind of vaccinations, uh, we can uh, uh, control the, this uh, infection, okay? So this is about this, uh, the picornaviruses, two infections, uh, the foot and mouth disease and uh, duck hepatitis virus infection. Uh, now, I would like to go for the uh, next family, the Flaviviridae, Flaviviridae family. Uh, this is another the important RNA virus family. So, this, uh, the name Flavi derived from the word Flavus. Flavus means yellow. So, the type species was the yellow fever disease. It's a highly fatal disease in a human. Uh, and since in that infection, yellow fever infections, the uh, jaundice occur and yellow is discoloration of the skins uh, because of which uh, the whole family uh, name has been given as the flaviviridae. However, the diseases that we are going to discuss it is not related with those kind of uh, yellow is discoloration. So this uh, uh, group, Flaviviridae, includes all the disease you are very, very familiar. All of you have heard about the dengue fever in human. All of you have heard about the Japanese encephalitis, J infection. Of course, we are not going to discuss about those uh, disease. Zika virus and yellow fever, these are the Flaviviridae genus, uh, important member. However, in animal, we are more interested for uh, important disease in pig, classical swine fever. Don't get it confused, almost similar to that of the African swine fever. African swine fever is the DNA virus infection. So we are going to discuss a little part, not now. So classical swine fever uh, is a uh, systemic viral infection of pig, and this is considered to be another uh, killer disease in pig, classical swine fever and the genus Pesti virus. And at the same uh, time, another uh, bovine viral diarrhea virus. This is also, this. both the virus are very much prevalent in our country. And this is basically affecting bovine as well as pig and sheep, goat, etc. So these two uh, infections we are going to uh, discuss in our, uh, as per our syllabi. The third member is the Bodo disease virus. Uh, of course, this is restricting to uh, Scotland and England, the bordering area, this uh, disease has been recorded. Uh, they're having some geographical um, uh, uh, tropisms and uh, they are not uh, widely uh, available everywhere, this border disease, so we are not uh, concerned about this one. So, however, the other things like the Hepa C virus causes human hepatitis C virus. This is another very fatal hepatitis infection in human. Uh, so, whenever you get time, please go through the, the diseases and uh, must know about Japanese encephalitis. As you know, pig is an amplifying host. And in fact, pig also suffer from uh, some clinical manifestations like abosons and stillbirth and some sort of encephalitis also occur in the pig. But uh, we never considered it as a major disease in pigs, Japanese encephalitis. However, this is highly important in human. So the pig and the wild bird, heron, mosquitoes, and 
human. They are the cycles where the dengue, uh, this Japanese encephalitis uh, circulates. Similarly, the dengue, the animals, mosquitoes, they, uh, they, 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 they transmit these infections under the flavivirate family. Now, uh, let's come to the general characteristics of flavivirate. So, they are icosahedral symmetry, almost 40 to 50 nanometer moderate side virus, and they are envelope virus. So, they acquire the prominent envelope, and in the envelope, they process some very important glycoprotein spikes, uh, which are immunogenic. So, they are mostly the uh, E glycoprotein, then ERNS, um, uh, this kind of uh, glycoproteins are expressed uh, on its surface and uh, these are uh, useful for the virus for uh, binding with the host cells and producing the disease. However, uh, we can utilize this uh, uh, surface glycoprotein spike for vaccine productions. Okay. So the viruses are unstable in the room temperature. They are sensitive to lipid solvent because they are envelope viruses and uh, uh, they can be grown uh, in the uh, common uh, species specific cell lines and uh, the the genome size is a uh, small one 12.3 kb size and they are a positive sense rna virus so when we say positive sense immediately what comes in your mind is that the virus as soon as the encapsulation takes place inside the host cell the protein translations will occur so no transcriptions occur at the beginning stage okay however in the later part of the replications uh, the transcriptions and uh, translations occur so these uh, viruses when you grow in the cell culture then they do not produce any cytopathic effect this is one uh, important uh, mechanism uh, the virus will nicely grow in the cells but the cellular changes you cannot observe no cell death will occur so thereby the virus can coexist with the cells uh, for its production. So they are non cytopathic viruses. Now coming to the classical swine fever uh, disease. Now, before this uh, African swine fever appeared in our country very recently from the last year, uh, always we say that the classical swine fever is the uh, topmost priority in the amount of viral disease of pig. But uh, as you know, that African swine fever is uh, more uh, severe than the classical swine fever and is killing the pigs like anything. So uh, both are swine fever, but uh, the, the etiology is different. Classical swine fever it is an RNA virus. However, the African swine fever is a DNA virus infection. So we'll come to that point in uh, some slides down there. So the disease is also initially called as the hog cholera because of uh, uh, severe diarrhea that produced in classical swine fever and the uh, stage of systemic infection. The, the pairs patches inflammation occur and diarrhea is the results because of the intestinal lesions. However, it is a systemic disease in pig. And uh, the, 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 the disease has been recorded in uh, most of the uh, swine producing country. Uh, however, most of the developed countries, uh, Netherlands, Germany, and other European continents, most of the European continent, they could able to eradicate the disease from their country. However, some Austria and uh, some other uh, countries, uh, Mediterranean uh, countries, uh, the disease is still outbreak occur and is very much prevalent in the, the classical swine fever. So the causative organism is the pestivirus C, is the class, uh, causative organism, and commonly we call it a classical swine fever virus. The genus is pestivirus and the family is flavivirate. Okay, that's the etiology. And uh, good thing is that the virus doesn't uh, have any serotype. So it is only antigenically all the uh, isolates are uh, similar. So because of which uh, uh, effective vaccines are available for controlling the infection. So antigenically, the, uh, all the viruses, they are closely related within the group and uh, can be very well controlled by effective vaccination, right? 
However, for uh, epidemiological purpose, when the genomic analysis was done, it has been seen that uh, the viruses are having certain genetic dissimilarity, although antigenically similar, but the genetic dissimilarity is seen among the viruses and 10 different groups has been proposed for epidemiological study of uh, uh, classical swine fever virus. We call it as a genotypes, okay? So this is in uh, pictures where it's showing uh, the, the, the nucleocapsidal uh, symmetry uh, nucleocapsids genome and envelope and envelope contained as E2, E1, ERNS glycoprotein on its surface, which are most immunogenic and they utilize, the virus utilize this uh, glycoprotein for attachment to the cell surface for production of infection. So interestingly, this virus, this entire length, 12.3 kb length, virus, they produce, they are having a single open reading frame. This is the entire open reading frame. This is non-translated regions, both the sides, 5 prime, 3 prime, and the middle whole portion is a single open reading frame. And this virus, when they translate into protein, they produce a single protein within the host cell. So these single proteins are later on clipped by viral protease enzyme at different location to give rise to different structural and non-structural protein. So this way the viruses can uh, uh, complete its replication and can survive uh, in nature. These are some of the characteristics generally we've seen among the viruses, not in the eukaryotic organism. A single polyprotein is formed from a single open reading frame. So if you talk about the host, this is a good thing that uh, the disease occur only in pig, no other species, uh, the virus can cause any disease exclusively in pigs. But the uh, thing is that the virus can also cause disease in wild boars, wild pigs. So wildlife may also reserve, act as a reservoir for the virus for domestic outbreaks. So when you talk about the spread, you'll find this is not a stable virus in the environment. It's quite fragile, cannot uh, survive for long in outside the animal body. But the infected animal can excrete the virus through their excretion and secretion. And in contact animals can really pick up the infection. One of the worry point is that uh, the virus can uh, cause a chronic type of infection. So chronically infected animal who, who survive from the acute phase of the disease will act as a source of infection for the new animal. And thereby in a form after the outbreak, some of the animals in the chronically, they may save the virus for a longer period. So that is the reasons why in 2005, when a massive outbreak occurred in our college farm, uh, we have called the older animal just to make sure that the virus they totally uh, goes out of this uh, uh, campus. And then uh, after that, of course, we are not recording the classical swine fever infections. However, in 2013, as all of you know, the PERS virus has devastated our farm. And now we are at a verge of getting the African swine fever. So we have to be very, very proactive and have to protect our animal and entering the virus to the home premises. Okay, that's a different issue. So uh, the spread, if you uh, uh, go through it, then you'll find the direct transmission through lacrimal secretion, direct contact, and even the virus transmit to the fetus in utero pregnant animal if get infections then in utero transmission occur so those uh, piglets born out of in utero infections their disease manifestation is of a different type most of the time they do not show any symptoms or some may produce some uh, congenital abnormalities so even certain studies reveal that uh, uh, short distance, if any uh, pigs they die in the farm and if we do not dispose the carcass properly, then pet animals like dog, cat, they may, even the bird, mechanically transmit from one seat to the other seat. Farm equipments, farm workers who are in close contact with the uh, suffering animals become a source of infection. So I have to take care uh, while uh, controlling the infections uh, when occurring in the nearby area. So coming to the pathogenesis, you'll find this, uh, it's uh, mainly the immune uh, modulations or uh, immune uh, um, 
uh, the, the presence of the virus inside the body and its replication into the cells can stimulate the immune systems and a lot of cytokines are produced and uh, affects is mainly the effect of the cytokines. So the virus, they mainly attack these lymphoid structures and uh, severe inflammatory reactions are occurring in the secondary lymph nodes like tonsils and um, lymph nodes. Then even in the pia species in the intestine, uh, extensive hemorrhage and severe inflammatory reactions uh, uh, produces. So almost all lymph nodes are affected. So uh, uh, this uh, degenerative changes again causes immunosuppression to the animal when the lymph cells of the lymphoid uh, organs are depleted and they are damaged. So uh, the pregnant fetus, uh, uh, the pregnant animal may have bought these infections uh, because of systemic infection. And uh, the epithelial cells, uh, um, the, the, the hemorrhages that occur through the uh, capillaries uh, throughout the body, as a result, the hemorrhagic patches we can see on the body surface. So somehow showing similarity with the purse infections. So those are uh, having the common uh, symptoms most of the time. However, when you go for the uh, post-mortem, then uh, certain uh, basic differences we could observe. So acute form, per acute form, chronic form, and the congenital form, these are the different types of uh, disease manifestations seen uh, in pigs. So in the acute phase, yellow is diarrhea may produce, and conjunctivitis, high fever is the first signs, and uh, nerve and abnormalities, some animals they develop. Then gradually, they produce purplish discoloration of abdomen years. So this indicates the uh, fluid uh, or the um, leakage of uh, blood, the cyanosis that develop in this uh, uh, skin and they cause endothelial damage. So in the parakeet form, the animal may die without much showing any symptoms. Uh, so in the chronic form, the animal uh, may purchase the virus for a period of eight months to 10 months and basically they dies out of secondary complications. That usually happen. So, uh, and that stays, the chronically suffering animal become a source of infection. We have to be very careful while uh, maintaining a recovered animal from classical swine fever um, so that they become a source of infection in the little part. So, coming to the lesions, uh, some of the things like uh, what we call as a turkey egg kidneys. Probably all of you have seen the turkey eggs uh, having some spotted uh, lesions. This is the kidneys. And you can see the pinpoint hemorrhages, spotted hemorrhages on the surface. It looks like the skin surface of a uh, turkey egg. That's why it's called turkey egg appearance of kidney. And these are just all the uh, blotches and uh, hemorrhagic patches that we can see in the ear in the white skin pig. Uh, then strawberry lymph nodes. The lymph nodes, they appear uh, the strawberry in color. Okay. Somebody is describing with strawberry. Uh, so these are the lymph nodes where extensive hemorrhages we can see. In the spleen, these are the infrax, uh, black spots. These are the infractions in the spleen. This is another feature. And this is what we call as the paternals uh, in the uh, um, colon, colon uh, area. We can see these paternals. Uh, they will look like the button. Uh, but uh, this uh, this indicates the inflammatory reaction in the submucosa, particularly in the PS patches. The cells are uh, severely affected and inflammation sets there, and that leads to this is a picture I captured in 2005 outbreak in our farm, uh, typical button ulcer, and uh, this source. So this is the area, this is the colon. And if you can't open inside, you can see those button ulcer. And this one, what I'm focusing this part is the um, uh, your is the uh, mesenteric lymph nodes. You can see such an extensive hemorrhages we can see in the mesenteric lymph nodes. So, um, here's some of the clinical uh, and the post mortem uh, changes that we can see in the uh, classical swine fever. So, congenital infection, sometimes the mummification, stillbirth, and malformations may occur, abnormal tiglates. Uh, birth may takes place. So this is one consequences. 
Now coming to the uh, diagnosis. So the diagnostic approach, because uh, we talk about PRS uh, and then African swine fever, classical swine fever, more or less having the similar kind of symptoms. So even in sometimes the salmonellosis, acute salmonellosis, uh, the animal may show this kind of symptoms. So uh, we have to record the clinical observation very properly. And the conformity diagnosis, we have to go in the laboratory uh, test. And among the laboratory tests, as I said, that uh, the RT-PCR uh, become the quicker approach and very conformly we can detect it uh, within a very short span. However, some of the classical tests like FAT, AZPT, ELISAs uh, are exist for detections. Even the large scale screening can be done uh, with the samples. And Sandwich ELISA is uh, a practice for detecting the antigen, so the virus in the tissue sample. So similarly, we can go for isolation. Of course, it takes time. Uh, so the virus can be grown in the PK15 cells. Um, but the issue is that the virus doesn't produce any cytopathic effect. No cellular change you can see. However, the virus will grow very nicely in the cells without producing any changes. So uh, we have to depend on the secondary methods of immunoperoxidase days or a fatty test for localizing the virus in the infected cells. So those are the um, uh, tests we can perform it for detection. So earlier when this kind of molecular and uh, group tests were not available, people, uh, they, uh, they, 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 they perform one test called as the in test. Of course, these are not uh, absolute uh, nowadays. So it has been seen that uh, any cell culture, if it is priorly infected with Newcastle disease virus, and then you give the classical swine fever virus. The classical swine fever will produce extensive lesions in the uh, cell culture. So Newcastle disease virus in the PK15 cells never produces any cytopathic changes. But when you mix up both the virus and give infections, then you can see cytopathic changes, explosive cytopathic changes. That is what is called as the ENTIS, exaltation of Newcastle disease virus. However, this is not a uh, common practice. and People, um, I, I, I at least could not see this test uh, in the recent time. Okay. Now coming to the prevention and control, for quite a long period, we are looking for vaccines and for many, many years in our country, we are depending on the lapinized rabbit passes virus vaccines, which are of very, very poor quality. And because of which the disease was rampant, uh, even after vaccinations, this lapinized or rabbit passes vaccines uh, of course, this is live attenuated vaccines, but uh, cannot give any protection. Very recently, uh, last to last year in the market, uh, uh, this particular uh, live attenuated vaccines uh, become available. And uh, this is uh, this particular vaccines is an excellent vaccines and can give very good protections against the classical swine fever if properly administered into the animal and give the booster dose very properly and all of our college farm animals are protected under this particular vaccine. So um, the vaccine is uh, suggested in the one month of age and revaccination at six month interval, even can go up to one year depending on the company's recommendation. So thereby we can protect the animal from occurring of classical swine fever. Uh, but uh, the, no doubt it can give protection, uh, but uh, we cannot think about the eradication at this point as because we don't have any marker vaccines. So in European country, they're able to eradicate the disease by using a, a marker vaccines, taking a recombinant into glycoprotein gene uh, vaccines for just like the Covisil vaccines we are taking, they prepared an E2 based uh, vaccines for uh, vaccinating the animal, the animals are getting protected against the disease. At the same time, the, they are able to differentiate the naturally infected animal and the vaccinated animal through uh, DIVA test. Okay, so um, the other methods, like uh, you already came to know about how the disease transmission occur, we have to block all the portals of entry. More particularly. Uh, since in any pig husbandry practice, import of animal is a very common feature. Time to time, we need to import the new germplasms to the farm premises. 
But what we can do is that we can quarantine the animal for a period and observe uh, their um, health and if possible can take sample and test it uh, if any carrier status, particularly adult animal, if you uh, bring it to the farm. Uh, with all vaccination record, we have to take care. Uh, without going through those process, if you just pick up the animal and mix up with the other animals, then it is uh, common that we may uh, get uh, we encountered some outbreak. So these are the things that we need to take care. So difference with African swine fever. Uh, uh, when we talk about the ASF disease, then uh, we'll discuss uh, this point once again. <clears throat> now, the second infection, the bovine viral diarrhea virus, BVDV infection. This is uh, again uh, uh, also synonym is the mucosal disease, and uh, basically it, um, characterized by uh, the epithelial infections and severe diarrhea we can see in the animal. So the disease has been recorded in uh, India, different uh, types were identified, both in cattle, sheep, goat, even in the yak, yak population also, the BVDV infection has been recorded in all country. So this is caused by the bovine viral diarrhea virus, it's a pestivirus A. So uh, this particular virus is antigenically related to classical swine fever and border disease virus. So these three virus, they show some antigenic relationship. Of course, uh, not up to the level that they can cross protect each other, but uh, they react with each other. The antibodies, they react with uh, each other viruses, okay? So that way it is important because the bovine viral diarrhea virus also occur in the pig. So if you simply collect the serum sample and go for serological screening, some false positive results may occur. So two biotypes, type one and type two has been identified. The, um, some viruses are cytopathic, they cause cellular changes, whereas some are non-cytopathic. So these two variants are seen among this VBDB. So in our country, the VBDB 1B uh, has been seen in cattle and 2A and 2B are seen in sheep and goat. So the disease uh, basically occur in the cattle of all A's and breeds are susceptible and other animal species are uh, sheep, goat, pigs are also susceptible. So this is a concern like since the antigenic relationship is there, the pig may also suffer from BVDV and false results may appear. So we have to depend on antigen-based uh, diagnostic uh, approach for classical swine fever as well as BVDV rather than serum-based. So they are readily uh, transmitted uh, uh, through secretion and excretions and in contact uh, animals may get the infection. This is an important feature, transplacental transmission. This is uh, quite uh, uh, peculiar. In utero infection, if it occur, then the coughs, those are born out of uh, those infected uh, cattle. They become, uh, they show no antibody response against BVDV. However, these animals, they produce the virus in large number and are excreted through uh, their uh, secretions. So the animals are seronegative, but they are harboring the virus. It basically happened when in utero infections of BVDV occur and uh, certain percentage, not all, certain percentage of uh, the uh, newborn cough uh, uh, through unitary infections. So no antibody response against BVDV. However, they synthesize the virus and produce and excrete it through the secretion and they become a source of infection for the other. So those animal in the course of time, if they come in contact with the wild type virus, of course, the explosive outbreak may occur. So they are also having similar kind of lymphocyte, lymphocyte tropisms and then the pious paths is inflammatory reactions that occur. And uh, the animal ex, um, um, develop severe uh, mucosal reactions. So uh, the profuse diarrhea, foul smelling, depressions are the constant feature with high rise of temperature. And so any cases of uh, diarrhea in bovine, the 
severe diarrhea, watery diarrhea, uh, we can think about this presence of PVDV. Um, uh, the, 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 the nasal ditches, erosion in the mouth and salivations are the feature. Erosions and senior esophagus, the rumen, that's why it's called as also called as a mucosal disease. The mucous epitheliums are affected. Basically, this is not the mucous epithelium, it is the sub-epithelium where the lymphoid aggregates are there. They 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 their swelling occur. Okay. Somewhat the concept is similar to that of the paramyxo variety family. But here the lymphoid uh, organs are mainly affected. That corneal opacity and hyperkeratosis of the skin and neck. Sometimes it seems in BVD we affected animal. So this is the story where a unitero infected uh, infections leads to um, the cough, uh, which are uh, serologically negative, but they excrete the virus and become a source of infection for the other. So that complicates the whole epidemiology of the disease. And uh, it's, in those cases, it is difficult for uh, make sure the complete eradication of the disease. Even the developed countries like America and uh, uh, New Zealand, they are unable to eradicate the disease from their uh, country because of this uh, complex epidemiology. So diagnosis is uh, similar what we discussed it here. Bovine testicular cells are used for isolation purpose and the common uh, test we can adopt it for on diagnosis purpose. Again, I'm repeating in that uh, ELISA detections uh, for pig is a confusing one uh, as because uh, CSF and BVDV is indesirably related. So for prevention and control, both inactivated and live modified vaccines are available. Inactivated are targeted in the pregnant animals. Live modified, we can give it in uh, uh, other animals other than the pregnant animals. So vaccination, we can start with the four week of age and uh, boostering at eight months. So thereby we can get uh, protection. But this vaccine is not available in the uh, Indian market, but in some state of India, particularly in the state of Punjab and Haryana, uh, those are a very good uh, milk producer uh, state. There, uh, I heard that uh, this uh, vaccine stay procured and they use it in their animal. However, in our uh, market, uh, we don't get the vaccines. As such, no Indian uh, pharmaceuticals are producing vaccines for BBTV. So these are some of the information that I want to share with you. Uh, uh, many, many, almost two different family we discuss in one uh, session. I feel this is quite laborious and understand all of you. That's why the number is coming down to 24. But uh, uh, I'm quite open and uh, you can discuss it at any time. Many, any queries, everything is occur. So thank you very much. I hope that you will put some queries and doubts and uh, we can further discuss about this uh, diseases. Or I'm ready to help you whatever way you uh, want it, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay, bye-bye. We'll see you again on Monday. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Tomorrow, tomorrow morning at nine. Tomorrow morning at nine, we'll have a combined class. No doubt tomorrow is second Saturday, but uh, instruction was there to conduct a class. So tomorrow morning at nine, I will take a combined class with the Jalogi student and topic will be the retroviridae. I will be speaking on retroviridae. Tomorrow morning at nine, please do join. Thank you very much.